Hi guys, welcome back to Faith, Love, and Vision Loss. I did not post a video last week because there was a lot going on. First of all, I had a birthday last Friday. Yay! I turned 43. So yeah, I'm 43 years old. Um, we didn't do anything to celebrate, but I did have a lot of... Um, attention happening on my TikTok account last weekend. Um, I went from 488 followers to a th over a thousand in uh, less than a week. So it's it's been a very blessed week and, um, and I'm very grateful for the support that I'm gaining on there um, just because I didn't think it was going to work out at first and then suddenly you catch the attention of the right group and kind of takes off and uh, not surprisingly um, it's been my uh, faith videos that have been getting the most attention and second of course advocacy videos about um, being blind and um, speaking up for ourselves so there's something that I wanted to talk about today that I think is really important um, I don't think I've talked about this in the past, so I want to make sure that um, that I don't like blow over it because it's very important. Um, and that is um, the actual emotions that a person goes through uh, when you lose your vision. Um, this is really unique for everyone because not everyone goes through the same emotions. Not everyone loses their vision the same way. Not everyone loses their amount of vision the same way. Um, the thing that a lot of people fail to realize is that blindness is a spectrum. Just like there's a spectrum for autism and a spectrum for other types of um, disabilities, blindness is a spectrum. And so some people lose a little bit of vision. Some people will go completely blind in one eye and not lose any vision in the other. Some people have um, diseases like retinitis pigmentosa that causes them to gradually lose their vision over time. Then they get used to a certain amount of vision and then they lose a little bit more and a little bit more. Um, a popular person that you guys might know or have heard of on YouTube and TikTok is Molly Burke. She has retinitis pigmentosa and she gradually um, loses her vision. Um, but um, and then there's people like me who lose their vision from what seems like one moment to the next. Um, dealing with diabetes, um, it's such a treacherous disease. You could be completely sighted one day and blind the next day because that is just the way that diabetes works. Um, of course, with a lot of diabetics, it is gradual, but a lot of us don't realize it because we fail to take the steps in going to have our eyes checked out. And um, that causes more and more damage as time goes by. And it doesn't get caught until it's too late. Um, so because blindness has such a wide spectrum, the emotions that we all go through are very different. Someone who has a degenerative disease that is gradual will go through the emotions at different points in time. You know, you'll get used, like I said, you'll get used to one amount of vision and then you'll lose a little more and you can go through it all over again. There's people who will just go through the emotion process one time. And um, one of the things that most of us will go through is fear. And fear is a very valid emotion when you're dealing with vision loss because it's a scary thing, man. It's, it's, it's not something that you want to go through a lot a lot of us most of us take our vision for granted and when we lose our vision 
it is so scary and you don't know like if you're going to be able to move around your house or if you're going to be able to leave the house because you know everything about your world changes um you no longer are able to just walk around and go here and go there and do what you're used to doing because you can't see where you're going your balance changes um i mean even for me when i first lost my vision this everything was just just i didn't know what was going to happen um for me my biggest fear was not being able to work now that's just because that's all I ever worried about. Work, 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 work. I didn't worry about Wendy. And because I didn't worry about Wendy, I have the health issues that I have now. But I'm taking care of Wendy now and I was forced to take care of Wendy. And um, it's not a bad thing. So it just depends on, on the way you look at it, you know. Um, I was scared because, you know, I was the one who would always do the grocery shopping. Um, I was the one who always did our online orders for everything, clothes, Target, everything. It was me. I, I, I did that. You know, Arturo, like, had a um, really easy role in our house with the exception that he had to drive everywhere. So because he had to drive everywhere, because I never drove, not even when I was sighted, then I did it everything else um the one thing that he was always really good about was helping me clean up the house because I was really bad at it um because I was always working um and so my biggest fear was not being able to work not being able to provide not being able to do anything and so my like I've mentioned in the past my first thought was like oh my god I'm not a singer I'm not an influencer. I'm not a YouTuber. What am I supposed to do now that I don't have my vision? Like, I had no idea because I was completely ignorant to the fact that technology is so advanced and there's so many things that blind people are able to learn that really the only thing that we're not able to do is see and aside from seeing we can't drive so we can't do anything involving a forklift or a bulldozer or anything like that um so we basically can't operate heavy machinery um but we can do jobs you know data collection customer service um we can even cook and uh, i'll get into that maybe today maybe another time but there's just so much that we as a visually impaired community can do and people don't realize this. Um, and so as I started getting past the fear and I started receiving therapy and I started talking to my therapist and my first therapist that I had during this journey told me that she was visually impaired I was like, whoa, wait a minute. You're like a full on, full fledged social worker. And what do you mean you're, you're visually impaired? Like I was just completely just what? And so that's when she told me about the San Diego Center for the Blind. She was the third person in my life that told me this about the center. The first person that told me about the center was my cousin Itza. Um, she told me that I had to have my options open in case I didn't recover my vision because I swore I was going to recover my vision at this point in time. And she said, you need to have backups. You need to know what you're going to do. Let me help you. And so, um, she gave me the information for the San Diego Center for the Blind and for the Braille Institute. Unfortunately, the info for the Braille Institute was outdated, um, I don't know <coughs> where the Braille Institute is currently located here in San Diego, but their formal location, former location at UTC no longer exists since they remodeled that mall and it's completely different now. But yeah, the Braille Institute is no longer there. Um, and then I went to the California Retina Association for a second opinion about my eyes. 
and the doctor there recommended the San Diego Center for the Blind. But his exact words were, I'm not saying you're going to be blind, but it's always great to have this on the back burner. And I was like, okay, you're the second person that's mentioned this to me. That's great. Fine. Whatever. And then my therapist mentioned it, but she actually told me that she was an intern there when she was a student at San Diego State. And so when she told me that, that kind of like pushed a button in, in me somewhere. And I was like, okay, you don't have to sit here and be useless and feel sorry for yourself. And there's so much that you can learn and so many things that you can do. And aside from that, you know, I was um, having a journey with my faith at the same time, trying to find out what I believed in because I was born and raised Catholic and there was so much negativity going on around about the Catholic Church. I mean, there still is, but I wasn't sure if I wanted to go back to the Catholic Church. And so I started watching uh, different services on TV, especially Joel Osteen. And I still love Joel Osteen. I'm not going to lie to you guys. He is a great motivational speaker. Um, his words are very uplifting. The things he says are beautiful. I've never heard him say anything negative, but I was routed back by my heart to the Catholic Church. Um, I've told you guys why I decided to be Catholic again. Just the gospel, the day that I finally sat down to watch Mass. It was just not a coincidence. Nothing about God is a coincidence. Nothing in life is a coincidence. I was in the right place exactly when I was supposed to be because God's timing is perfect. And so it was around this time that I realized that I wanted to be a Catholic and that I realized that there was so much that I could do with my life. And that's when I started exploring other things my husband uh, sat down and read to me. He used to sit down and read to me. We, we don't have time for that right now, but um, he read me a book called The Purpose Driven Life. And that book helped me realize that I have a purpose in my life and um, that purpose is to help others. And that purpose for me is to start a nonprofit organization. Um, and I've mentioned it in the past and I'll mention it again. I want to start a nonprofit organization that is going to be a resource center. This resource center is going to provide services to people who are blind and visually impaired primarily. Um, I haven't dive, like, you know, really explored other types of disabilities, but I want to because I don't want to limit this resource center just to blind and visually impaired people. I want it to be open to people who are deaf, people who are mute, people who have physical, other types of physical disabilities, people with intellectual disabilities. I just want this resource center, this wonderful, beautiful place that I want to help start because I don't want it to be mine. I want it to be something for the people, you know, to provide uh, free legal advice, social workers, people who are there just to read your mail to you, people who are there to help you fill out paperwork, people who are there to, you know, teach you how to use a CCTV to, you know, just things that you may not have available at home. And I want this to be able to reach people in Tijuana, Rosarito, Ensenada, Tecate, Mexicali, like all over the border. Do I want it to extend into other states? Yes, possibly. But you know, if I have to stop at the Imperial Valley, and I wanted to go there because the people in the Imperial Valley don't really have anywhere to reach out to. Students that, you know, I've like, it, like worked with at the San Diego Center for the Blind, even though my experience at the center has only been virtual because of the pandemic. They're coming out there from Fallbrook. They're coming out there from the Imperial Valley. They're coming out from places that are super far away, like two hours away. And 
you know, we need to have resources available at a closer distance. A lot of people who are visually impaired, when you just lose your vision, the last thing you want to do is travel a great distance to go to school or anywhere. You have to get used to your environment. You have to get used to moving around again. You have to get used to living your life again. And so I feel that it is very important to have that readily available in the neighborhood. And of course, I want to start where I live, which is in the South Bay, so that people who live in this area can benefit from it. And then as the center gets stronger, then it can grow into other communities. Um, and so God put that in my heart and I'm going to do what I have to do to make that happen because this is something that is very necessary in our neighborhoods and very necessary in our lives. Um, and so, you know, a place like this will also offer like groups so that you can talk about your feelings like your anger and your fear and your feeling of loss grieve the loss of your vision of your vision because that is something very very important that we have to do a lot of us don't I didn't because there was so much going on at the time that I lost my vision um but I was blessed that I look at my vision loss as a great thing because it brought me to so many beautiful things now in my life um, and I also um, am grateful because it brought me closer to God and so not everyone looks at it the same way like I said everyone's journey is different everyone's journey is unique and everyone's journey is an individual journey so we can never ever compare our feelings, our experiences, and our emotions to anyone else's. It's a completely unique and individual thing for every single person. So this is all I want to say today. I don't want to make this a drawn out video like all my other ones, um, but I'm going to end this in a prayer for us. So Heavenly Father, I ask you to please guide the person who is watching this video and guide them toward what they need and guide them toward you, Father. I ask this in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you so much for accompanying me on my journey today. I hope that you guys like this video. Please subscribe and hit that little bell so you get notifications when I upload new content. I thank you again for your support. I thank God for his blessings. And I hope you have a blessed week. Bye-bye.